In the previous video in this game hacking series, we reverse engineered the game and found out how to find, hook, and store player data structures by using code caves and inline ASM. We figured out how to find and store the data, but we didn't really figure out a way to display the data in an easily accessible way. We could launch a separate console window and display the data there, but that isn't really that useful in practice, as we would need to either play the game in a windowed mode, or Alt-Tab between the different windows whenever we wanted to spy on the other player's resources. Since we are already injecting into the game, we could also just draw our own data on top of the existing game world. But this isn't really a good solution either, as the game is already drawing onto the game world, so we would end up with annoying flickering as the threads fight each other trying to draw onto the same view. So what is a good solution? Well, the game is already printing and displaying data, right? So why don't we figure out how the game is already doing it, then hook and change it. During regular gameplay, we can enter a hotkey to show the player's name, as well as some high level statistics about the player such as their current overall game score. This information is updated around every second and is already part of the existing game's draw loop. So this is an ideal place for us to add yet another hook and also implement another new code cave for our work in progress game trainer. So where do we start? The first thing we want to find is where the current data is already being drawn. Once we know that location and how it works, we can hijack and change what is being drawn. For example, instead of just printing the player's name and high level score, we could instead print the player's actual resource statistics, population or current age. Basically, if we can find the function, we can add a hook and change what is being drawn during the main game loop to whatever we want. So how can we find the function? If we look at how data is currently being drawn, we could translate this data to a format string specifier, right? If this was a printf string, for example, the specifier would likely be percentage %s colon percentage %d slash percentage %d. So let's see if we can find that specific string specifier within the game process. If we launch the game and attach to a debugger, we can press the Find Strings button in X32 Debug to find all strings referenced within the application. Searching for that format string specifier we are looking for, we can see that we have a result. If we double click on the specifier, the debugger will take us to the place in the application where that string specifier will be used. If we set a breakpoint at this location, we can see that when the breakpoint is hit, the format string specifier and the value in EAX are pushed to the stack. Then, the function at 526404 is called. If we keep tracing through this function, we will eventually come to the function located at 465BA0, which is responsible for performing the actual draw to the game world of the string referenced in the EAX register. If we modify the string accessible via EAX before the call, so for example, if we modify the existing string with three A characters, we can see that the string drawn is also changed within the main game world. We have found the function location within the game world where player statistics are being drawn. With this known location, we can now set up another code cave to hook and change exactly what is being drawn. Rather than just printing the name and some high level statistics, we can instead change the string to contain additional data based on the more detailed player statistics we already found in the previous video. If you haven't seen that video yet, go and take a look now for some useful context. If we look at the specific location we want to hook in the debugger, and knowing the size of our code cave jump to be 5 bytes, we know 
that we will need one additional no operation byte as part of this code cave hook. Because our jump overwrite will mangle one remaining byte here when overriding the existing instructions. For this code cave, we again pop off the return address so we know where to return to. Next, we move the data referenced in EAX to the base address variable. And lastly, use push AD to preserve the registers and the stack. The data reference in EAX is interesting because as we saw in the debugger, this is the string which will actually be drawn to the main game view. Now that we know the address of that string, we can create a new function to actually change the string before it is drawn to the game world. In this new function, we first want to duplicate the current value in case we don't want to actually change the current value. This way, we can have a toggle variable to toggle over the different types of data we want to spy on while actually playing the game. Next, with the known format of name, colon, a number, a slash, and then another number, we can extract the player's name substring from the existing string. With the player's name, we can then find the player's current resources based on their name, then replace the original string with the copy we made at the start. Now that we know the current player and the location of their statistics, we can change the data which the game is actually drawing to the main view. If our toggle is drawing resources, we can change the drawn string to include the food, wood, gold, and stone values. If our toggle specifies the population, we can change the string to instead include the population and current age of the player. We also need to set up a type definition for that toggle. So we can toggle over each different way of drawing information to the game world. Then we also need to add a function to actually toggle the value. So each time this function is called, we can toggle over the string which is being drawn to the game world. Basically, we are creating functionality which enables us to change and iterate over what is being drawn to the game world. Just by pressing a mapped key within the game while our trainer is injected into the process. Lastly, we need to actually clean up our code cave. We can use pop ad to restore our registers and the stack, then add back in the assembly instructions which we overwrote with our hook, and then finally return back to the original call location. Now, whenever our trainer is injected into the game process and our toggle button is pressed, the data string being drawn to the game world will change each time that the draw is being updated by the main game loop. So with the code cave complete, let's test it out. Let's start the game and inject our trainer again. We can see that when the game starts and the player statistics are being drawn, nothing has really changed just yet. But if we press the toggle key, we can see that we now have a working resource spy. The statistics being displayed have changed. And we can now see detailed resource values for every player within the game. If we press the toggle key again, we can see that we now have a working status spy with the statistics now showing every player's current age and population. If we press the toggle key a final time, we can see that the original name and high level statistics are now being displayed again. Any time we want to view those statistics about the other players, we just need to press the toggle key and those values will be iterated over once again. This is going to be a very useful feature for everyone who is streaming this 1996 classic and don't want any of their viewers to know that they are cheating. That's it, a working resource and statistics spy created by hooking existing functions and just slightly tweaking how they work. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. It really helps the channel grow if you comment, like, and subscribe below. Also, if you're interested in solving capture the flag challenges 
across a range of traditional, Jeopardy-based categories, including reverse engineering, make sure to check out 247ctf.com.